Hey guys, here's an update on my leader test pattern generator that I picked up recently. I did finally go through and replace all 85 of the nasty old blue tantalum capacitors. And on first power up, bam, it's working perfectly. I've got the output feeding into my 11 year old Sony Trinitron uh, TV up here. This first pattern I've got is what they call the alignment pattern. That's what you would use to adjust the vertical and horizontal linearity. Uh, linearity means that the squares as you go left to right are equal size, that'd be the horizontal linearity. And vertical linearity is the vertical size of the boxes. You can also tell that it's correct when the uh, circle inside is round versus being squished vertically or horizontally. The next pattern is called the convergence pattern. This comes into play with color TVs and I was a little surprised to see when I fired this up that my TV uh, actually has some issues up here. Convergence, well there's three colored uh, electron guns in this set. One for red, one for green, one for blue. They're all supposed to converge on one spot to make white in this case. Well, when they get out of alignment, you get what you see up here, which is a separate red, green, and blue smear. As I back up, you can see how it's kind of twisting. A common reason that happens is that the screen gets magnetized. There's actually a metal mesh uh, aperture grill behind the glass inside the picture tube. And when you get something like a speaker too close to it, you can actually magnetize that. Uh, an easy way to clear that up is to use something called a degaussing um, uh, tool or degaussing coil. Another uh, another way this problem can happen is if you, the, the site gets physically damaged, like if you drop it, that metal tube is suspended on a, on a tension system and if it gets bent or out of whack a little bit, the whole picture can get messed up. I'm guessing this is probably a little bit magnetized. Probably doesn't help that I've got stereo speakers not too far away, so maybe I'll uh, rig up a degaussing coil. It's funny though how I've never noticed that just in my daily viewing but when you hook up a test pattern generator you can find these fine little misadjustments which is why this piece of equipment is so useful to have. Uh, here's another one. I'm not quite sure what that's for. They call it staircase which it seems to me makes bars of increasing intensity from left to right but I'm not sure why they're magenta like that. I have the service manual but I have the owner's manual on this so some of these I'm a little bit fuzzy on. But this one I think you'll all recognize. That's the good old standard color bars. And maybe this looks even more familiar with this which is color bars plus uh, a few squares down here. These are used of course with just the color TV set. I looked up to the standards and it's supposed to be gray yellow, cyan, green, magenta, red, blue, and then these are supposed to be two grayish boxes and a white box. And this last one is kind of cool I think, which is what this custom plug-in mod, or I should say optional plug-in module is for, called the multi-burst module, which sends out a set of six bursts on these various frequencies which the user can adjust. What that translates to on the TV screen is these bars. The lowest frequency makes bars that are spaced further apart. The highest frequency bars that are closer together. The reason uh, you'd use this is this tests the bandwidth of your TV. The better the bandwidth, the crisper the picture, the more you're able to distinguish these stripes. If you had a really badly uh, adjusted TV or a TV with bad bandwidth, you would just see a bar here. You would not see the fine striations on these bars. Or I should say, uh, inside these bars. Uh, so yeah, I'm really, really happy to have this because now I can adjust my vintage shots far more precisely. Another kind of fun thing you can do on color sets is they have individual controls for right, green, and blue to turn the guns off. So here's the good old test pattern. I can turn the blue gun off. I'm sorry, that's the green gun off. Here's the blue gun off. And here's the red gun off. Turn them all off. 
you get a bunch of black bars rather than all back on. So, <laughs> sure, it's a bit outdated because the NTSC standard is no longer used, but uh, it is a fun way to learn about how these video signals actually work and how the different components interact. I'll rig this up to my little vintage TV so I got set up over here. And I'll show you how it works on a vintage black and white TV. Okay, I hope you can see that this set is horribly misadjusted. The, the centering is way off so the circle's over and the linearity is terrible horizontally. Much wider squares on the left than on the right. So obviously I need to adjust this TV. One kind of annoying thing about this generator is that the only RF channels available are 5 and 6. There is another version of this device that has channels 3 and 4 which I really would have preferred because channel 6 has a local broadcast still on it which overrides this generator so I can only use channel 5 realistically and that's it. The two patterns get superimposed and it's just a scrambled mess but eh, I got channel 5 anyways. Other way I can use this is I can always take the composite output and feed it into something like my bladder tongue modulator up here and broadcast on any channel I care to. So uh, if you're into new or old uh, TVs, a device like this is really handy to get your hands on and uh, surprisingly it was fairly easy to service. Now here's a couple updates on some recent projects. First up, here's that Detrola Pee Portable I restored recently. I was able to repair the dial uh, cord pretty easily, so that's working fine again. And I've got it back in the case and all back together. And just this morning, I found somebody who's got a spare knob for me. So as soon as that arrives, I'll be able to pop that on and have a complete set. And here's my last quick update. It's for that WaveTech 1002 sleep generator I picked up recently. If you recall, I had mentioned that there was an, kind of an odd connector on here. Well, thanks to I'm a junk collector, I found out that that is a TNC or threaded end connector, unlike the BNC or bayonet end connector. Well, I was about to throw out the box that this came in when I heard something rattling around at the bottom. And lo and behold, there was a TNC to BNC converter lurking down there. So always check those boxes before you throw them out. You never know what might still be in there. So thread it on this end and bane it on the other. The reason this is useful is that all the cables I've got are for BNC, which is far more common. So I just screw this on. I can hook up all my existing cables to it. Alright, that's all I've got for tonight, guys.